this is rules and open government committee meeting for August 14, 2013. Any changes to the printed agenda? No. All right. August 20th council meeting agenda. Let's take that up. <coughs> Anything on page one? How about page two or three? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, uh, 1.3 is an afternoon, not an evening presentation. That's accommodation to LAFCO? Yeah. All right. Any else on two or three? About four or five. Page six or seven. Page eight or nine. Page 10 or 11. One of these, 11.3, apparently did not go to the Planning Commission. That's why we're deferring it. That's the yes, Ohlone project. So. so anything else on 10 or 11? I just wanted to confirm that the we deferred one item yesterday oh, okay there it is all right good i have some requests for additions we have the uh lafco lafco item that's the afternoon not the evening and those ads were actually already added to the agenda okay so the synopsis championships are in there Motion is to approve the uh, there before we vote on that. Um, we have a 9:30 closed session to start. Um, labor should not go as long, but we do intend to bring in the Mars Nave attorneys to uh, give an update. Um, I don't know if uh, 9:30 may be enough if labor doesn't go too long, but uh, we would start with that. And I'd rather do nine o'clock just to be sure. That's fine. Nine o'clock. <laughs> here, Silence is concerned. Here, Luigi doesn't like anything before 11 a.m., but. Man after my own heart. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends on how long the labor guys need. I, what? How much is the the litigation piece of this? We don't have as long an agenda as we had yesterday, but there were some things we moved off of yesterday that would be lengthy that we would take up on the 20th. We have uh, real estate negotiations for Muni Stadium. We have uh, an update on Stanford San Jose, and we have an update on the Measure B litigation. There's, and there's some minor workers' comp and some other things, but not nothing lengthy. Those would be the three lengthy items. Well, I think we can get it all done in, in two and a half hours. Unless Maybe. labor is long. Yeah. Well, unless they, unless they want to add to it. In a, we often don't know that until we get very close to the meeting, so maybe we should be cautious and say 9 o'clock. I'd rather do that than run into the 12 o'clock people leaving because of other uh, commitments. 9 o'clock? Okay. Yep. <laughs> uh, so, on the motion, incorporating that into motion? Yep. The time change. All right, on that motion. We have... Uh, I have a request to speak on the motion, Mr. Wall. Sir, uh, with reference to 2.8, uh, Habitat for Humanity, I would recommend that you look into their finances before you do business with them, just to make sure they're, they're sound. Uh, 5.1, the graffiti abatement audit. Uh, once again, there needs to be a legislative component um, to this graffiti issue, in my opinion, the council has not made the punishment side of the ledger for graffiti strong enough to deter. Yesterday, uh, we heard testimony from a, a citizen about the railroad bridge over 280 being repainted. I saw it being repainted, uh, a sector of it, when I drove by. It's just a matter of time before one of these little graffiti people slip and fall and la end up in somebody's windshield uh, going 60 miles an hour. So. This deals with legislation. You have people in Washington, you got people in Sacramento. There comes a time where you really have to lower the boom on these people 
that do graffiti because you're spending too much money dealing with it. It's becoming very, very dangerous, and it requires the legislators to, to really ramp up the punishment side of this ledger to, be, to deter, because there's no deterrence for it. On item 7.2, you want to make inquiries about the obligations of this energy grant. What I mean by obligations long term, because they're going to be hiring more city employees based on this grant. Now, the Environmental Services Department is the best grant farmers out there. They, they farm grants all the time, and you end up with city employees who then have to search for funding uh, within the department on other funding sources when these, these grant monies run out, but the obligations persist. Thank you. That concludes public testimony on the item. We have a motion to approve with the modifications as noted. On that motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None opposed? That's approved. Let's turn to the August 27th draft agenda. Anything on page one? Mayor, yeah, I just wanted to confirm that I have the, uh, the adjournment memory on that day. I don't see it noted. Yeah, so I wanted to make sure. I think we've turned it in, so just to be sure that it gets on the... When we do the amended agenda? Yeah. I haven't received it, so we'll check with your staff. Okay. Here. Anything else on page one, page two, or three? Page four or five. Page six or seven. Page eight or nine. Page 10 or 11. On 7.2, the actions related to the phase out of the expanded polystyrene foam food where council has already made the policy decisions. This is the completion of the process with the environmental review and the ordinance, if, if I understand this right. That's right. <coughs> yes. Okay. Anything else on 10 or 11? I have no written requests for additions. Any other requests? Changes. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion to approve. Any other? On the 20th. Mr. Wall, you want to speak? Thank you, sir. Item 2.1, the Municipal Regional Storm Drain Permit. Sir, you have an opportunity here before the state decides to get nasty and start enforcing this, this, uh, this very complicated permit to charge a parking control and let them start enforcing uh, up on vehicles that are leaking fluids onto the street. This would serve a myriad of your purposes, sir, especially trying to get rid of cars in the downtown and make people do biking and walking, other things like that. But these clunkers that are out there in mass are doing a lot of pollution that'll end up directly into the storm drains that's preventable by empowering uh, parking control to go after these vehicles. A specialized fund, a dedicated fund could be created through, from the citations to actually fund this program and to get these people off the general fund. 3.4, the reclassification of plant mechanics that you see there, sir. This has been, this is uh, also showed up on the public record. But even more so, it should be tied in directly to item 7.1, the Telstar uh, contracts. As you recall, as chairman of the Treatment Plan Advisory Committee, those Telstar contracts for industrial electricians, which have already been reclassified, but the instrument technicians haven't been. And uh, this is a way to circumvent Measure B because you want to make inquiry, sir, as plan operators, if they come in and they're reclassified at Operator 1, are they immediately promoted to Step 3 or Operator 3? And uh, I've heard stories to that, that account. 4.1, our friends at the Downtown Business Association continue to get $390,000, and yet we have open storefronts. So we have to ask the question, uh, what are we getting for the $390,000 outside of their support for a loser in the District 2 uh, County Supervisor race? Sorry, your time is up. 
That concludes public testimony on this item. We have a motion to approve with the modification. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? None opposed. That's approved. Upcoming study session agendas. We have, don't have the agenda to look at. We'll get to the study session in just a minute. Legislative update. We have nothing from staff on the state or federal uh, for today, although things are certainly happening in Sacramento. So meeting schedules. We need to set a council study session on service restoration and reinvestment measures. And I think uh, we may talk about dates here, but initially possibly August 29th and possibly other dates. So does the staff have a recommendation on the date on that? Mr. Mayor, members of the committee, we had set the 29th uh, in our staff report as the recommendation. We've subsequently heard that there may be a few council members unavailable on that date. So given yes. that the 3rd of September would work. I've heard from four council members that they probably won't be here that date, and I'm sure that a couple of them for sure certainly won't be here on the 29th. So the next available one would be uh, September 3rd, which we don't have a regular council meeting because of the holiday on Monday. So how does that date work, you think? Well, I think it's a great idea since I'm one of the ones who can't make it on the 29th. And you've got a LAFCO. Yeah, LAFCO training. Okay. Yeah. okay. September 3rd? Sure. So I'll make a motion to approve with the date change to September 3rd, and of course, make sure we notify the council offices right away so we can get them changed. Yeah, well, that, that's one of the dates we've held for a study session, so, but that doesn't mean people haven't already made plans, so we need to get uh, them notified. Uh, one other question about that, and that is where do we fit in our ordinance priorities uh, discussion and decision making ordinances and or study sessions and where that might fall? So at the committee's pleasure, we could also do that on the 3rd and uh, have that be concurrent to deal with both the revenue measure as well as the prioritization. Another option would be to hold the prioritization for the following council meeting and we could put it on the regular agenda. Mayor? Yes. I vote, I vote to have that item be on the, the next week. I think that September 3rd is a juicy enough topic and, and, and focus versus uh, the other one we could handle in the regular council meeting September 10th. Of course, that's my view. So, anybody else have a? I have no preference. A thought on that, Madam Vice Mayor. Um, how how much time is staff going to be able to use up to just provide the information? On the prioritization uh, or no, the, no, no, on, the on, uh, revenue uh, measure. 3rd, yeah, we're expecting a, a fairly lengthy presentation okay. as well as obviously a discussion by council. Okay, I mean, if that's the case, then I guess September tenth would be ideal. What we should, should try to do, I think, on September 10th is set it early in a meeting so we do it early when it gets done and we don't have to worry about running out of time after at the end consent calendar? Of the assuming, assuming after consent calendar, assuming there's no bridges on it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> or before the consent <laughs> calendar if we have a bridge too far yes. to consider. Maybe a bridge too much. Uh, okay, well, let's operate on that. So the motion is to set the service restoration reinvestment for September 3rd, 1.30 to 5 p.m. And then we'll think about the other one when you're prepared, but it looks like September 10th council meeting. Very good. Okay. Work for staff. Also, just for your information, perhaps action, we have the dates of August 22nd and 29th held. So if the committee would like to release those dates, I think those could be release. done now. So yes, I'll add that to my motion. So. Okay, that's part of the motion to release the 22nd and the 29th from consideration of study session dates. Mr. Wall, you want to speak on this? Sir, I think that you should also include the topic of um, reformulation of parcel taxes. If you reformulate parcel taxes, you can then bundle certain city services to be placed on parcels. And not, not their entire service cost, but enough that on its overall accumulative accounting would be an enormous amount of money but you would have to then this reformulation that every parcel would have to be looked at as to how many living units these high density living places let's say you have 300 units each unit would then have to pay some form of a parcel tax not the entire parcel tax but let's say 25 bucks a year 
or 30, depending on how finance could construct a, an instrument that you could bundle a series of uh, services to relieve pressure from the general fund or to pay down your retiree <coughs> obligations or try to move police and fire off the general fund or to set up the basis for annuity-based hiring so you would have a large amount of money. We've seen and we'll discuss later today how finance has done an outstanding job in, in using the variable rate bonds and fixed rate bonds with reference to the plant income fund. So it wouldn't cost that much money. Measure E years ago started out at $10 a month for the libraries. And it's grown. And now, now you rely, uh, now you're going to be relying on over $7 million on this. But if you construct it to every single living unit within the city to pay a small little tidbit, it's not going to cost hardly anybody any money, but you'll raise a vast sum of money that you can start st stabilizing your programs. Thank you. That concludes public testimony. We have a motion to set the date on the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None opposed. That's approved. The public record. Anything the committee would like to pull for discussion? Motion to note file. Second. No motion to note and file. Mr. Wall? Uh, item C was a mistake. It shouldn't be on the public record because it was a public record request for information. I uh, Mistakes happen, Mr. Mayor. I want... Not, nobody to be disciplined in the clerk's office for this. This is just an accident. It was, shouldn't be there. Uh, and I'm not harmed by it. I'm not going to invoke the 10 day, you know, warning thing or whatever it is. It, it's just a mistake. And mistakes happen and people shouldn't be punished for it. On item D, this one's entitled, Should City Manager Conduct a Public Apology Workshop to Hone Apologies for the Environmental Innovation Center? Now, I think somebody has to, to apologize for this. And it's certainly not my fault, okay? I believe you, Mr. Mayor, and the council has been betrayed over this, over this whole program. I believe the Office of the City Attorney needs to be publicly apologized to in perpetuity now because of all the extra work. But we have to ask the bigger question, uh, Mr. Mayor. You, as a trained and a great lawyer, how, how does one knowingly use a failed contractor, failed in the sense they had bad credit, they had other financial problems, they had serious problems with subcontractors using poor materials, poor workmanship, knowing full well to use this contractor for the, as, as for the basis of the new market tax credit lending program and for a grant from the U.S. Economic Development Agency. There's issues of, to me, my own opinion, misrepresentation, fraud. I mean, I would never have done such a thing. But other people in the administration did. And that's why I think that the council has been betrayed, because you rely all the time on the administration as the city charter dictates. Sir, your time is up. We have a motion to file the public record. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Not opposed. That's approved. Turning to Section G, we have three items under Section G. First is a request to approve of Columbian flag raising motion as a approved. special Second. event. Uh, motion. motion is to approve. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Not opposed. That's approved. Next item is three. It's a uh, request from Councilmember Calra to make a minor amendment to the already approved outdoor smoking ordinance. Uh, first question on that, is this really a minor amendment? It strikes me as a minor amendment, but I want to see what the <coughs> staff thinks about it. From a language standpoint, yes. So, I mean, it, it really isn't inconsistent with the city's adopted policy, but that's the policy call. But from a language standpoint, it's a fairly uh, easy fix. Is it something that we're going to have to do extensive outreach on or any outreach on? I think that's one of the key questions. And unfortunately, I missed the gender review this morning. So, Laura, you may want to chime in if I um, miss anything. But I think some of the, the questions is relate to expectations and what a reasonable distance is and how difficult it will be to uh, set the definition of that as well as what outreach might be necessary and whether in approving this the council wanted any um, uh, We'll say report on the current ordinance and to what extent that has been effective. 
uh, any of those I think could make the workload somewhat uh, more significant than a minor amendment. We certainly had a lot of people involved in the smoking ordinance uh, modification the last time we did it, and that puts the question out there of you know, how engaged will people be on this. Uh, do we have any distance limits in our ordinance now for reasonable smoking distance? I don't believe we do. Oh, do we? Okay. We have 30 Laurel? feet. for planning, building, and code enforcement. Uh, the municipal code currently does specify distances for smoking, so I believe this is coming out of the BACMED, um, out of the Bay Area Air Quality Management District's uh, work. Uh, I believe we had also talked about it at the February priority setting, so there may be some linkage there, but I think uh, per our assistant city manager, um, you know, smoking <coughs> is a topic that generates a lot of interest, and now that smoking is broader than just cigarettes, there's probably other uh, constituents who'd want to uh, uh, comment on this topic as well. Well, we have public hearings and people can come and comment. The question is how much outreach do we have to do it aside from putting on a public hearing and people give them their 10 days notice and they can come tell us what they think and whether or not the staff thinks we need to do stakeholder outreach Etc. on this. Yeah. Perhaps we could do an initial scan of, to scope this and, and I'm trying to avoid the term smoke it out, but in, <laughs> anyway, in any case, uh, try to flesh out um, how much interest there would be in this topic and uh, bring it back to rules with a uh, recommendation from there. Okay, I think that's a good idea. It's just, it looks minor, but sometimes they aren't. So. Mayor? Yes. Hey, can I ask one question maybe that would come back? Is Have we, have the San Jose PD or has anyone any been, ever been cited for the existing policy? I'm just curious if what's the, is, you know, whatever the level enforcement. Whatever. Right. We, we would need to uh, poll our, our folks as well. As you may recall, when we brought this forward uh, initially, this was uh, largely a set it and forget it ordinance uh, so we had been partnering with both breathe california as well as the county and so we want to check in on their involvement and, and experience since the adoption Mr. Thompson? i was just going to make a motion to do what you suggested second okay motion is referred to staff let them uh, smoke it out <laughs> uh, Mr. Wall, you want to speak on this one i just wanted to give uh, accolades to council member calro for uh, finding this little loophole and then I'd like to uh, for you to think about the marijuana people somebody saying hey I have to smoke my little marijuana pipe because my hip hurts or my knee hurts or because I don't have a brain cell how whatever excuse they use <laughs> uh, which is very important too if you're going to run drug tests on city employees that city employee could inadvertently walk into a place and, and breathe uh, this marijuana smoke and it's in their system and how are they going to deal with uh, passing a drug test or try to you know fend off uh, the folks the city folks are saying hey you're, you're using drugs as a city employee so you know think about that one thank you and thanks council member Calra. Uh, one thing I would uh, request staff is that you do your work and get back to us in time that if it is a major effort we can get it into the priority setting session for probably September 10th understood we'll do Okay, that's a motion to refer this to staff on that motion. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? None opposed. That's approved. Item G4 is reducing the cost of home improvements. Request from Councilmember Camus to examine ways planning, building, code enforcement may reduce the cost of single family home renovation and some other related matters. Motion right. to approve. Second. We have a motion to approve uh, request. Uh, Councilmember Camus is here. I'd like to speak to his memo, I think. <laughs> I, I, this, this discussion came out of, <laughs> since I'm here. Uh, since, uh, this this, this um, or you know this request came out of a discussion that I had with Joe Hordle uh, the other day, and some some complaints that I received from some local projects. One I'd like to pass out here. Um, just a couple. Uh, this is a letter that I got from the South Hills Community Church, where they're doing a twelve thousand dollar remodel to their theater uh, for lighting and what have you. And the permitting fee was six thousand eight hundred and thirty-six dollars. Um, so, I also looked into a, another project where it was uh, thirty thousand dollars, and we found out that that the fee was more than five thousand dollars for that one. 
but so the basis here when I, when I was talking to Joe is that, you know, what is causing the cost to go up so high? And, and he said, well, they get a piece of this fee and that fee, executive managerial overheads and, and um, you know, traffic mitigation fees. And if you're fixing your bathroom or if you're, if you're um, uh, changing the light structure in your church, that shouldn't cost any, you know, uh, traffic maintenance issues. I mean, I, I don't think that it's going to have an, an impact on the roads, and this is, this is where our discussion came from. And I think that, um, you know, again, I, I, um, I'm a big advocate for making sure that, this, that everybody does their work legally, and I think at, with these prices, people are either not going to do the project or do their project without getting permits, which is unsafe for the community at large. <laughs> So I'm hoping that um, we can put this on the agenda and hopefully get the staff working on it. And I think Joe is, is willing to work on it. I'm really happy with his office for, for uh, agreeing to, um, to work on this issue. I think it affects us largely. I think if people actually, it will encourage the homeowners to do things the legal way. It might even, it, it might even positively impact um, the fees that we get because if more people are, are, are doing their work um, legally, they will have more money coming in. Plus, we get to reassess their homes at higher values and get more tax dollars out of that. So eventually, we'll, we'll have long-term um, 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 revenues from that. Of course, it'll impact the, uh, the, commu the, uh, the small businesses in the area. I think the contractors will be very happy. The real estate people are. I have, have several letters um, from real estate associations and contractors that I could send your way. And I'm, I'm just hoping that you consider that, put it on the agenda, and I'm hoping that we could fix this, make, make a two-tier, one for small projects and one for, you know, obviously we need to have, uh, uh, you know, more costly permits for large projects, building 22-story buildings, but if somebody wants to remodel their bathroom or their church, I think, you know, $6,000 is exorbitant, and, um, and I'm hoping that's, that's the problem we can fix. Well, let me... Uh, just say I've been down this road before, and there's a, a narrow range of things that you can consider doing. <coughs> uh, one is you can direct that these not be cost recovery, and uh, almost everything in the Planning Building Code Enforcement is cost recovery. And th then if, you, if it's not cost recovery, then you have to figure out, well, who's going to pay for the cost? Because these are, as I understand it, driven by costs, including the overhead numbers. So uh, those, those costs are what they are. What they are. So that's one thing, is not cost recovery. The other is to, to require less work, so that even if you are cost recovery, it's less expensive because you're not doing as much work on small projects. And we've managed to do that in some areas where we've gotten a lot more efficient, uh, like the solar permitting, where it used to be quite a bit more expensive than it is now, to require less uh, work. Uh, and the other way, I guess, is a combination of that, and that is what some other cities do, which is they have money from their general fund that pays uh, for uh, this kind of work. And those are pretty much the range of things that we can do. Uh, I, for one, am more concerned about the, the timing of the permitting, because I know that's also equally important, uh, more so to businesses than to the residents, but it's also important to the, the residents for their own homes, because they got to live through it. So those, there, I know there's a narrow range, and the question I have, I guess, for this referral is how much work will it take for the staff to do this, other than I've just given you the answer, because uh, I've heard it before. <coughs> uh, how much work will it take, and is this a, a, a major effort that we should have a workload assessment done before we, we move ahead with it, or is it something that staff's already thought about? So I'd like Ed to, or Laurel to Laurel, talk, if I, you talk could about that. comment on it, please. Um, and we do appreciate the idea coming forward. It is something that we've been thinking about. It's something that we did even in this last fee schedule to try and reduce the cost for some projects in terms of some of our uh, overhead fees that we do charge uh, for the general plan update. This would require some amount of work. So rather than a workload assessment, we were thinking maybe the priority setting might be the better venue for the council to determine when would be the, the right time for us to do this. Uh, we are looking at a, um, some other options, not just in terms of the three that the mayor laid out, but are there ways that we can really scrub our overhead rates to understand which are those projects where that overhead is really necessary 
and which projects where it really isn't. So, and that is gonna take a little bit of work with our partners and other city departments. So that would be our recommendation that it be come forward through priority setting. It is something that, you know, we agree with the council member, you know, if we can encourage more people to get their permits and we can have fees that help encourage that business to come in, that would be great. But I think from the council's perspective, um, you know, is this just for single family home? improvements or now is the scope growing and I can appreciate you know a church wanting to do the right thing and renovate but at, at some point we need to just put some boundaries around what what how do we define small projects and even that question uh, takes a little bit of thinking thank you okay Mr. Thompson well, I wanted to thank uh, the council member for bringing this forward I know you guys have heard me rant in the past when I had got my water heater permit that cost more than the water heater and the installation and at that time I did a survey of the four cities that surround my district and the closest price to what we charged from one of those cities was one-third of the cost of what we did and the cheapest was one-fifth of the cost that we did so my permit to put in a water heater with uh, two inspections because I didn't do it quite right the first time uh, was like $380 or something like that, just a, a really high amount. And you also heard me in the past argue that I think we should have some general fund money go towards planning, building, and code enforcement because I think it's important um, that we get, particularly the, the homeowner projects, make it where it's reasonable to, to get your permits. I mean, it's very easy now. All my permits that I've gotten, and I've gotten a number of them, have all been walked in, and I've came in with my sometimes well done plans, sometimes poorly done plans, but been able to walk out with a permit. And that part's great. Um, but the pricing um, is really an inhibitor. And I, I remember when I put new windows in my house, it took me seven contractors until I got one that was willing to do it with a permit because of all the hassles that were associated with dealing with the time involved of getting the, the inspections and the fees and all that. And I actually had to hire someone from out of the area to do the work who was willing to get a permit because I wanted it done right. So I, th I think we really, there's an area that we um, have a lot of room for improvement and a lot of room to be more efficient. I know we do have online permits for some things now, um, although it's not widely advertised. Um, in fact, I think it was my water permit, uh, water heater permit, I waited for a couple of hours to get up there to find out that someone could have just told me to go over to the kiosk and do it on a computer. So maybe examining some of the more online ways of doing things as part of this might help us bring those costs significantly down. And then uh, finally, I'd like to say that we do have upcoming very soon the city auditor's audit of overhead charges and I think that that is something that you've also heard me gripe about over the years because overhead calculations aren't always the same and they come out different at different times and in different projects and in different departments and I think we need to get a handle on that so I think all of it together um, can be a big improvement uh, but I think it's something we need to do a combination of all of all of the above to achieve the result which is your permit should not cost 30, 40, 50, or 100 percent of your project cost. It should be a small percentage of the overall project cost. Anybody else has the comments? Mr. Wall, you want to speak on this? I like the plan presented by Councilmember Thomas. Very well thought out. There would be one amendment that I would recommend is that should you link the uh, county assessor's office into this program because you mentioned in your memo about you get more property taxes. Well, it's the county assessor that assesses the property tax. And if they don't have a LinkedIn database with these permits and upgrading properties, they have no idea that these properties have been upgraded. So if that was done in cooperation with the county, then you would see some real uh, property tax revenue come to the city. Of course, the other flip side of the coin is people find out that these permits are being, you know, databased by the county and they're going to jack up their property taxes. They might revert back to doing things the old-fashioned way. So 
there is a downside to it, but that is the only way you're going to get an increase in property taxes by linking it to the assessor's office. Okay, that concludes well, public testimony. Councilman Cameron said you have something you want to yeah, add. Yeah, well, I, my main point here is some percentage of something is better than zero percent of, you know, whatever the charges that we're having, and, and I'm, I guarantee you that people are remodeling their homes. I guarantee you that, and they're not paying for it. They're, they're just doing it without um, the, the, the extra expenses, and I'd rather have them do the work right and us get something out of it. And, I, and again, the long-term fees are the, you know, I don't know if the, the reassessed increase in taxes are being calculated into the, 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 the uh, permit either. We know we are going to get ongoing revenues from these small, even these small projects will, will, will give us ongoing revenues. Maybe it's $100 a year more for that house because now it's more valuable because it's been reassessed by the county. But that's the long-term revenue stream that maybe we're not counting in the actual cost and something that should be counted. Well, I can Mr. assure you the assessors never missed any of mine. <laughs> so they do a very good job. Um, I know our options are the workload assessment or the priority setting. And quite frankly, uh, I think we can get to the priority setting part quicker than we can get the full workload assessment. Yeah. So I'd like to get this on the list because it's been a priority of mine and I think it's something we need to do and hopefully w on September 10th it, we can get it in motion. Yeah. That's, well, that's, that's my motion. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's the motion to refer it to the priority setting for September 10th presumed date. Anything else, staff? Nothing else. Okay, on the motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, not opposed, that's approved. All right. Section H would be next. We have two work plans, Community Economic Development Committee and Neighborhood Service and Education Committee uh, work plan for the six months. I don't serve on any of them, so <laughs> I'll be happy to approve the work plan. Let them lead the <laughs> Second. Motion is to approve the uh, work plans. Mr. Wall, you want to speak on this item? With the CED uh, work plan, operation and maintenance agreement with the Mexican Heritage Plaza. At some point in time, the city has to realize that this project is a loser. I mean, they're not making any money. Uh, I recommend just dumping this project, selling it, get rid of it. Um, that was a bad investment. It, uh, it's basically nothing more than a graffiti place. Uh, they talk about their little song and dance programs. Fine. We all like song and dance programs for kids. Uh, but you're, you're subsidizing them way too much money. Uh, this motel conversion for a homeless population, this may be just concentrating a problem that should be actually dispersed to the four winds. I mean, uh, this is ridiculous, Taking, uh, converting a motel and throwing these homeless people in there. Uh, sure, there's some good homeless people, but the vast majority of them that I've seen, Mr. Mayor, down there on the river and whatnot, uh, deserve to be in a stockade or a mental institution for that matter. There should be some report done about the percentage of unemployed youth throughout our city, or different, you know, high school youth and whatnot, and try to reformulate the uh, living wage and prevailing wage down to a reasonable level to where you could hire a lot of kids if to pick up garbage for nothing else. On neighborhood services, once again, you have the homeless rehousing, so you have two committees working on the same thing. But animal care services, this is one of those areas where you could bundle. This would be a perfect department that you could put on a parcel tax. So people love animals. If you've reformulated those parcels, you know, $5, $3 for each living unit, you'd raise a ton of money, set it up as an annuity. You wouldn't have it on the general fund anymore. So these are just a couple of ideas. Also, on the park rangers, I don't know what the possibility is to convert those park rangers into San Jose police officers if they could meet the specifications. Because our parks up. Uh, we have a motion to approve the two committee work plans on the motion. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? None opposed. Plans are approved, taking us to our last item, which is open forum. Mr. Wall? From a memo, city memo, about the Environmental Innovation Center. Quote, 3.04 million for this transaction will be provided from the San Jose Santa Clara Treatment Plant Income Fund. Revenue from rental and sale of WBCP land is one of the revenue sources for the Income Fund, Fund 514. 
Of the 3.04 million, 2.117 million is derived from one transaction, a PG&E eminent domain deposit for easements that is acquiring for the Los Estero substation period. The remaining revenue, $922,288, is available due to the identification of 18 million in excess accumulated revenue in two San Jose bond payment funds for San Jose Santa Clara financing authority bonds, period. The income fund was one of the source funds used in prior years to make deposits to one of these payment funds, period, quote. Mr. Mayor, you got to have finance come, come to Lord Jesus on this. How they were able to raise $18 million is a plus. They did a really good job, but they did it over a period of time, and it's my belief they didn't reconcile their funds. And all this money went, well, a portion of it that I read, went for this cursed Environmental Innovation Center. And this is where I believe you have been betrayed. Because they throw these documents out there, and they're out there, but it's impossible for all the council members and you, Mr. Mayor, to read all of them. And so that's why I say that this Environmental Innovation Center, there is a lot of shenanigans, and especially the biggest one is, how did the housing department was able to sell that property, a contaminated property, to ESD for four and a half million dollars uh, when part of that money came from a joint power authority? Sorry, your time is up. I think I may have one more request to speak. Ma'am, did you picked up a card? Did you want to speak during open forum? Do you want to speak? Come on. We allow two minutes for speakers in open forum. Hi, my name is Tati White. Um, I am with the people on a consistent basis for low income. Um, I hear um, the need of the people and being low income myself, there is very little room to grow in the employment, being an African American woman. Um, I just see a lot of minorities being attacked here. And um, that caused me to be a little bit more interested um, in the meetings and what actually goes on here in San Jose. I am for the people, my heart goes out to these people. All homeless people, they need some type of direction and, and a place to go. Um, I don't know how long you guys have been dealing with the homeless, and like I said, I just came here 2010. But I do know that um, me, myself, I, you know, having very little education, um, there's not too many doors open. And I can honestly say this being low income myself. Um, there's games being played for the low, um, housing authority, um, the Section 8 department. Um, you know, if these people, some people are hungry for education. Some people do want to get out of the system and be a lot more independent. Everyone is not trying to, um, you know, just lean on the system and just live, you know. If there is help, where? If there is employment for low-income people, where? Um, I had a job. I got a job through the county. Um, Center Road is, uh, helps a lot of people when they're on welfare. Um, but there's also games and attacks. I started going to Evergreen, and CalWorks took me off and told me I couldn't work, I couldn't go to school anymore, and they made me go get a job. And at the job, I was attacked. Um, that's pretty much what I want to say. Um, I, I feel the people need more help. Thank you guys for hearing me out. Again, my name is Totsie White. Okay, thank you. That concludes the open forum, concludes our meeting. Uh, we're adjourned.